Thanks Acorn TV for sponsoring this video. This is officially the last video of 2020, and I wanted to end this year with something that is meaningful and carries at least some value to you, independently of your own productivity methods, systems or tools. Minimal productivity is something that we all should strive to achieve. It's very easy to get completely overwhelmed with the amount of systems, apps and planners that have been created over the past few years. But the best system is actually the one that you consistently use. Efficiency is very hard to measure in the productivity community. The creators of new apps, methods and knowledge systems will always assure you that their system is the best system. But that's actually impossible and it's impossible because although people have a lot of things in common when it comes to data processing and habit building, everyone is dramatically different and that means that a universal productivity tool or system that is able to seamlessly apply to everyone is literally impossible to achieve. With that in mind, for 2021, let's try to achieve some simplicity and thoughtfulness in our planning or organization systems. Let's pick something that is simple and makes us excited to use and get our life together. And let's stick with it. Instead of constantly switching systems, let's try to look at the info around the internet and filter that information with thoughtfulness, only adopting the methods that seem to accommodate to our pre-existing system. Let's look at new options with curiosity and open-mindedness but while reminding ourselves that we have enough and whatever we currently use is sufficient to achieve whatever efficiency goal we are trying to achieve. The second minimalism principle or task will be to declutter tasks and events. Just like you would do to your closet, don't fill your calendar or timetable with unnecessary appointments. Your time is a valuable resource because it's limited. You don't have to go to every event, attend every unnecessary meeting, and be available to have one-hour chats with everyone on your contact list. The truth is, not all activities, people, and goals are worth the trouble. You should be able to ruthlessly decide who and what is worth your time and who and what isn't. As simple as that. Does this sound too demanding for you? I'll just take it slowly and remind yourself to be more mindful while you're filling in your calendar or planner. This may sound ridiculous at first, but the truth is, your calendar is a direct and visual representation of what and who you value in life. If you throw everything in there all the time, you will have a difficult time discerning your own priorities in the long run. And that's bad because it's impossible to prioritize everything. You could if you were immortal, but you aren't, so start picking what really deserves robbing you of your time. And look, this is not applying the KonMari method to your appointments. Not everything in your life will spark joy, and that dentist appointment will have to happen. This is going beyond the joy factor, this is more about creating a line between what matters in the short or long run and what really doesn't matter. If you want a quick shortcut to solve this conundrum, just ask yourself the following. What is the outcome of not doing that task or going to that event? Sometimes small and short tasks have big outcomes, negative or positive, and sometimes skipping a long and boring event really doesn't have any consequence at all, positive or negative once again. Practice that exercise and try to apply it while you're blocking your calendar. The third principle will be to declutter your habits. I think that after a year packed with time to develop and experiment with some personal habits, 2021 is the perfect time to look back on what we've tried out and figure out which habits really made a positive impact and which were just a waste of our time. Try to use this principle throughout the year. Don't overexert yourself with new habits all the time. Take the time. Instead, to pick a couple that are meaningful and contribute positively to your lifestyle and reinforce and develop them. Also, don't be mistaken, the thing is, many different healthy habits can lead to burnout. Just because you're adding them up, it doesn't mean they're leading to a healthier you. And this actually leads to the fourth principle, which is slow down. Slowing down may increase your productivity, rather than actually decrease it. 
Just like I said in a past video, if you take it slow, you become mindful of your actions and your choices, and that will help you make less mistakes, and less mistakes means time saved and the more productive you. Despite having a productivity channel, I'm completely against the hustle mindset that nowadays seems like the key to success. You know, the tiny and slow things in life are pretty good, and I'm very much positive that I want to experience those, even if they are for some reason not compatible with the seven habits of highly effective people or whatever. I mean, baking a cake, reading a book twice just because I liked it, playing Stardew Valley just because I liked the soundtrack, or going for a walk with no specific purpose while leaving my Apple Watch at home are all valid activities that bring me joy, and therefore should have their own place in my schedule, because, insert gasp, I like to do them even if they are not milestones towards a new promotion, or they won't help me buy a car, or gain more 10,000 subscribers. You know, just take it slow, just live a little. Instead of being moderately productive all the time, just be ridiculously productive in some parts of your day, and then be completely unproductive, slow and entertained in the rest of your day. Don't strive for the middle. Finally, the last principle, and this one is pretty tied to the last one, and the third one, actually I think they're all tied in general, is that you should be matching your effort to the outcome. There's nothing worse than working for hours on something just to find out that that task suddenly got dropped, or knowing that a project was crossed off a list and those meetings you were in for hours were zero useful. Although sometimes that happens in environments you can't control, like your workplace, we do that a lot to ourselves, and we actually shouldn't. This can happen with your habits, activities, tasks, events, personal projects, anything you may think of. Sometimes you pick things to do that require a lot of effort, but in the long run, it wasn't really meaningful in the end. Perfectionism is one of the biggest culprits of this problem. The best example I can give you right now is bullet journaling. I spent so much time bullet journaling, like creating templates and decorating and searching online for washi tape and stickers and whatnot, and then I was so stressed because it had to be perfect and it had to be aesthetic. And then one day, I just understood that it didn't really matter to me. I know there are a lot of people that love bullet journaling because they find it relaxing and love the creativity of it and enjoy looking back on the journals. The thing is, I don't feel the same, I never had a pleasure of looking back at my journals, and when I do I just find lists of assorted tasks and reading assignments that get me stressed. So what was all of that work for? You guess it, for nothing, so I stopped bullet journaling, the outcome did not match the effort, so I dropped it. I really believe that by applying these principles, you can find a little bit more of a balance in your routine and your productivity. Also, I feel like I really need to remind you that productivity is just a part of your life. It can really have a positive result and bring you closer to your goals, or on the other side, the wrong productive mindset can be really harmful to your mental and physical health. So please remind yourself that even I, and I consider myself a really productive person, I respect my own boundaries, my own waves of productivity, and my mental health, and I do it all the time. That's your first step towards a productive mindset, not the other way around. And you know what I also like to do? I really like to watch shows and documentaries, even if that means laying on the couch an entire Sunday afternoon. And there's no problem with that. If you want to find a couple of new shows for the holidays, why not try something new like Acorn TV, which has an extensive library dedicated to British television, full of classics and newly discovered favorites. You can access thousands of hours of premium, commercial-free international content for $5.99 per month. And if you're afraid you're going to run out of content, don't worry, because they add new releases every Monday, so there's also something new to watch. It also works seamlessly with all of your devices, so you can watch your favorite shows on your iPad or iPhone, Android devices, and then cast them to your TV using Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV, and more. If you're a fan of British comedy, then you need to watch the other one. 
It follows two sisters from very different worlds who had no idea the other existed until their father dies and it's such a great show that I recommend to you. If you want to watch all of these shows and escape to Britain, Ireland and Australia without leaving your seat, try Acorn TV for free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code MARIANA. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, I wish you a happy new year and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!